Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there, and happy hump day to you. It is Wednesday, and that means it's time for another check-in, because apparently the YouTube scheduling thing is going reasonably well. There have been a couple of hitches here and there that have come up, but for the most part, the schedule's awesome. I am glad that that has all sorted itself out, and sticking to the separated release dates for different kinds of content works out really, really well. Hope you guys are enjoying that couple of interesting topics to talk about in just a second, but just a quick channel update. Um, as always, huge, huge thank you to the people who are supporting everything going on. I had a huge influx of uh, replays just in the last day or two, uh, so hopefully that will give me some good material to sift through as things are moving on. Maybe I'll have some good content coming out. Don't slack up, though. You need to keep sending replays. If you have any good games, send them to me. I cannot do this without good replays. Um, I did a cast, or not a cast, I did a live stream on Monday, which was actually a lot of fun. Just randomly turned everything on, uh, played a few games, and then dabbled around in Ashes of the Singularity for a few minutes. That was a pretty good time. I did not post the Ashes video to YouTube, so if you missed the live stream, sorry guys, you just missed out. Uh, but the, um, the cast, the Supreme Commander play, is posted. However, YouTube processing screwed me over once again, and it is 360p. Apparently, it's never going to finish processing. I have tried a couple of different things to try to trip that, and apparently, once it sticks like that, there's nothing I can do from everything that I have read. So, yeah, hopefully it won't do that next time. Um, for our rambly topic for today, I got to thinking about this because during the Ashes of the Singularity playthrough, basically... Uh, the topic of conversation was mentioned where, hey, someone should make a Supreme Commander 3 or at the very least just make a strategy game that's built on the concept of Supreme Commander. Because basically we've had Total Annihilation, we've had Supreme Commander, Supreme Commander FA, and I am actually, don't hate me, I'm going to throw Supreme Commander 2 into the bunch because Supreme Commander 2 had high unit cap, it had the... Um, it had the full strategic zoom. It depended on more fluid motions than zipping around the map with hotkeys and that kind of thing. So it kind of fit into the same category, but it watered down some of the stuff that made Supreme Commander so amazing, which is why it just fell flat. So we were discussing bringing a game like that back, and I got to thinking about it, and it's something that I don't understand about strategy games. If you look at first-person shooters, once they hit a certain point in development, which you can argue where that point is, whether it's Halo, whether it's Call of Duty, this, that, and the other thing, if you notice, across the board, across the consoles, PC, wherever you find them, first-person shooters pretty much all behave the same. The gaming industry found a formula that makes people happy. Uh, you have relatively fast action or you have stealth, which is a little bit slower paced, you know. The control schemes are the same. The pacing is the same. The art style is mostly the same across the realistic shooters. Now, granted, the photorealism and the different tones that games take, choose to take vary. But overall, there is a good pattern that you can see. And this has kind of shown up in some videos that complain about things like that because they say every single first-person shooter is a repeat of the first-person shooter that came before. We're on, you know, the umpteenth iteration of Call of Duty. We're on Halo 5 and there are more than five. We're on Assassin's Creed number five or six or seven, if you're going to look at that kind of game, where basically the gaming industry finds a formula that works and then they do it to death. And while I can see the argument there for overdoing it, and I think a lot of things have been done to the point where they just aren't enjoyable anymore, those games sell because they work. People consistently buy Call of Duty. People consistently buy Halo. Maybe not necessarily because, oh my god, it's going to be the greatest thing ever. But you know what to expect. It's a first-person shooter that you know how to play. You can jump all the way from Modern Warfare to Black Ops 3 
and you have the same controls in the same type of world and it works the same way. So it's a consistent winner. People enjoy it. People play it. Why has that not happened to RTS? It's happened to stealth games. It's happened to third-person games to a certain extent. It's happened to first-person shooters, action shooters, but not to RTSs. You've got StarCraft, which is... Well, let me let me start that over. You've got kind of a division of RTSs where you have the click fests and the overarching strategies where you have games like StarCraft, um, Command and Conquer, that kind of thing, where you have limited camera views, you have um, game mechanics that force you into pressing more and more and more commands instead of streamlining that process. In my mind, that's kind of an artificial difficulty cap, but it depends on the style of game that you want to play. So you have all of those that, yeah, they pretty much work the same, but the art styles are vastly different. The internal mechanics are fairly different between games. I mean, some games allow you to fire with units that are moving, some don't. Um, there's different methods of victory, different methods of scoring. There's not really a settled way to do things. And then you've got the other side of the coin with the epic scale where you have, um, and I'm going to throw a few more games in here, which most of you probably don't appreciate, but some of you might, it's games like Planetary Annihilation and yes, Ashes of the Singularity, where you have huge, huge scales that you're playing with and those games do as much as they can to streamline your choices and your selections so that you can focus on the overarching game strategy. But again, with neither of those sides, do they settle on a formula that works? And with new RTSs, I, I actually give more kudos to StarCraft than to any of the other ones except for Supreme Commander for this aspect because they did find a formula that works. And instead of overhauling their entire system over and over again, they keep releasing expansions and furthering support for StarCraft 2, which is working out pretty well for them. Throw some heavy advertising in there and they have a huge money maker. It makes money to this day, even though it's an ancient game by a lot of people's standards. So then you move over to the Supreme Commander side and you have Supreme Commander that worked brilliantly. You had the expansion to Supreme Commander, which was even better. And granted, computers of the time weren't up to that. Engines of the time weren't up to that, but people loved the concept. I think those games released now would sell massively well. Then you move to Supreme Commander 2, which dumbed down the entire game to appeal to a broader audience, when in reality, well, and consoles, when in reality all it did was kill its dedicated fan base, because most RTSs have revolved around PCs. I mean, that's just the way that it's always been. There's always some people that will play them on consoles, there's always RTSs, RTSs that support consoles, but for the most part, it's a PC thing. And it's like game developers don't want to embrace that. They don't want to look at what has worked in the past. They don't want to look at things that have been regarded as masterpieces and keep making the same kind of thing. They want to look and say, oh, let's make Planetary Annihilation. All of these things were really cool, but we need to throw in these other experimental elements to make things so much better. And it doesn't work that way because then you lose the core that made the game so good because you're confusing it with all of these extra elements. You go to Ashes of the Singularity where you say, oh, we're going to value how our game looks over any of the game mechanics. Well, the reason people love epic scale RTSs is because of the mechanics and being able to feel like a master of the battlefield as you move all of your units around like they're chess pieces on this gigantic board. And if you're not going to give us icon support, you're not going to give us full strategic zoom, you're not going to give us this, that, and the other thing, why are you even making an epic scale strategy game? Do what works. Give people what they want. The concept has been proven already. You don't have to go add your own stuff into it and change the entirety of how the game works. Just do what's already there. Anyway, this 
it's turned out to be longer than I thought it would be, but hopefully it makes sense to you guys. And it, it's something that has bugged me for a while, and I, I literally do not understand why in action games you have a set of three or four formulas that you know, 80, 85% of games fit into this box and they reliably sell, they have a fan base, everybody knows what to expect, and people buy them, and then you go over to the RTS side, and it's all just kind of helter-skelter here and there, and everybody has their own thing, and everybody thinks they've got to add new stuff in all the time, and none of it works. Yeah, I think that's all I've got to say on that. That's basically ending in a question, because I don't have the answer to it. Maybe some of you guys do. I This is one in particular. I always say I'd love to hear your comments, but this is something that I would I I really want to see what you guys think. Post in the comments. I am fully expecting walls of text and lengthy lengthy comments. Maybe next week for the check-in, I'll actually address and read off some of the things that go on in this video, um, just to kind of talk about it a little more because I'm still formulating what I think about this. But anyway, that is neither here nor there. We'll get to that when we come to it. All right. I think that's it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you actually made it through this entire ramble, you are the bomb. Thank you for supporting everything I'm doing. And I will see you guys in the next one.